I, I do, I do want to take a few minutes, and I may even, unfortunately, cut into my message, but I do want to take a few minutes because it is the end of the year and just kind of talk about a few things real quickly because on the way here, I was actually having a conversation and it dawned on me that we, we are a people in crisis. Anybody think we're not in crisis? <laughs> Good, glad you corrected that one. We're, we're in some deep water here. Let me tell you why. Beginning first and foremost, this is an axiomatic statement. We do not have a government for the people, by the people. This is not political talk. This is me as an American, as a Christian, and as a human being that believes that we have God-given rights in this land. Now, Here's our problem. You know, people are afraid. Who knows what will happen in 2024? Will there be more chaos? Will there be more war? Will there be more? I don't have a crystal ball. But if I would tell you what my gut says, it's not going to get better, OK? We are in the state of California for the people who are watching who don't know where this is coming from. We live in an incredibly lawless environment, not the fault of law enforcement, but the fault of our justice system, specifically the district attorneys here in this state who refuse to enforce the law and basically hold people accountable for their actions. So when I say lawless, everything's, there's, there's no hold bar here, just whatever you wanna do. And actually the flip here is that if you are a law abiding citizen, you are basically a criminal. And if you're a criminal, it's okay. That's how it's working. And when I say that we should bear down, we should bear down. See, even this morning's news story, which is not a new story, police recruitment, law enforcement, has plummeted to recruit new people. Our army, our military branches are unable to fulfill recruitment for, to recruit people. They're actually turning to places like Comic-Con to recruit people or these anime groups or whatever. Like, I'm sorry, but if you go there, you probably shouldn't be enrolling in the military anyway, <laughs> okay? I'm, I'm just gonna say it like it is. And we've developed a mindset, and I've even said it, and I, I realized how wrong this is, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna correct myself in front of you because probably a couple of months ago, I said, who would want to sign up and who would want to defend? Because what are we defending anymore? No one upholds the Constitution. Everything is upside down. Are, are you, is anybody reading the news, hearing what I'm saying? Yes. It's all backwards. There is nothing that is what it's supposed to be anymore. And I'm sorry, I have no disrespect for people's personal choices but they are just that, personal choices, and they don't belong in the public forum or being shoved down our throats. So now fast forward, as I said, to these issues we're having. And because everyone's taken the mindset, why would I enlist? Why would I give my, basically my person? You know, law enforcement, take this for example. You can't do your job anymore. You put on your uniform, to go to work, and it can start as a regular day, and just performing a routine stop with protocol can end your career and end your life. We've seen enough of these in the news, okay? For our military, my heart sinks when you see pictures of generals and high-ranking officials side-by-side -side social media pictures of uh, men and or women or whatever they are in full drag, in full whatever. They, I don't care if that's what your personal life is, but my friends, I think you would all agree that it's inappropriate. You know, when the world looks on and sees some of our top brass dressed in women's clothing, men dressed as women, or whatever, whatever the issues are that are so, do you think we're being taken seriously? No, of course not. The world's looking on and laughing. We are a sitting duck and we are prime 
for something to happen here. We don't have the same military structure that we used to have, and all of our resources are being put somewhere else. They're not being put to the American people. Here's the problem. Months ago, I said I wouldn't sign up for that. You know, if I'm in my mid-50s, maybe if I was in my 20s right now and things were different, I probably would have signed up to serve in some way, shape, or form if I was eligible. Remember, I wasn't eligible for a long time because I wasn't a citizen. I became a citizen in 2007. But I take my comments back. Because if we all say I wouldn't sign up to defend and I wouldn't put my name down to do, what happens is we're all stepping back to say, I have no part in fighting. I have no part in trying to get back my country, my country, your country. And the only way it's going to be taken back, I don't mean by force as in looting and destruction and setting fires and campouts. I mean the people must take action. That action comes when it's time to vote, absolutely. But that action also comes when we finally have had enough. No one is protecting Christians anymore. No one. All you hear about are hate crimes against our Jewish brothers and sisters, people who have basically isolated, and you can all hate me for this. I'm sorry that people are apologizing for being born white or being Christian or whatever they're apologizing for. You are a fool if you're apologizing for whatever God, whatever shell God gave you. If you are that weak-minded, you don't know who God is, and you probably need to if you ever could. Think about the fact that this coding actually means nothing. It will last you, most of us, 70, 80, 90 years, and then it's gone. While all of these people out there focus on this, and now we're white supremacists, we're Christian nationalists, we're freaks. Because people have flipped the narrative, and guess what, we've all failed. You know when we failed? When we sit back and we let people just punch and punch and punch. Now, a couple of years ago, the big thing was bullying. Well, this is bullying of another, another kind. And what I'm telling you is, if we don't take a stand to get our country back, we will never get it back. Our liberties and our freedoms are being eroded. In case some of you don't read the news, who has T-Mobile here? Anybody have T-Mobile? Now, I've never done this before, so please don't take it the wrong way, get rid of it. T-Mobile is one of the first cell providers. You may have clicked the button that says, I agree to the terms and conditions. Well, they've changed their terms and conditions. So if you, who have T-Mobile, this will spread to other carriers, I'm sure. But if you have T-Mobile, and you should text somebody something that T-Mobile does not agree with, if you have a conversation, they, trust me, all of our conversations are being eavesdropped. I think you have privacy on your phone, you're nuts. If you say something that they don't agree with, if you post on social media anything, they have now reserved the right, because you've clicked, I agree, probably without reading, to fine you. To fine you. You're a private citizen. This is a company. Dump it. That's how we fight back. That's the first step. Educate yourself on who's trying to pull the strings. Well, somebody said to me, well, how can, you, how can you fight back when companies like BlackRock and the street control everything? Basically, it means going to grassroots. It means trying to find things that have a purpose, that stand for American values, that are not an encroachment upon our freedoms and our rights. You start looking at, I've told you this before, but please pay attention. And I've never vocalized this, so I'm going to do it now, and it may cost me, but so be it. You go buy your coffee at Starbucks, you are supporting abortion. Do you realize that? You go buy your whatever you want at Target. I don't think I need to elaborate. These are all places I used to spend my money at. But I realized something. There's power in the pocketbook. We saw that with Bud Light. 
And I'm sorry, Dylan Mulvaney will never be a woman, okay? You can put ketchup colored tampons everywhere you like. You're never going to be abroad, okay? <laughs> but this is the insanity we're living in. I watched a video the other day. I never, my blood never boiled like this. It was in a church. And the whole church, listen, this is my problem. I don't judge. If you want to dye your hair pink, you want to shave your head, that's your prerogative. You are interested in same sex, I'm not your judge. I know what the scripture says. My job is not to condemn you. My job is to educate and inform you. Your job is to work out your salvation with fear and trembling before God. But this particular church is having service, and you've got a man standing in the pulpit wearing lipstick about the color I'm wearing, full makeup, wearing a what looks like a Roman toga, talking to people, very serious, about Jesus Christ. But it was so perverted that I thought to myself, you know, it's time for me to just say a few words on this. People, if you don't wake up, you will wake up to a country that, it's very hard to recognize now, but you will not recognize it because the more you let and the more we tolerate people infringing, there's no protection for the Christian. We must all stand in allegiance and, and line up with Israel. I'm not against or for Israel. But we have to stand with every other person. But who is standing with the white Christian? Who is standing with the black Christian? Who is standing and saying, this, there is reverse to this. You know, you can't say, well, we must, the church that wants to be the LBGTQ plus church, they must have rights. Well, we have rights too. The reverse prejudice that's happening, no one's talking about. No one cares about it. So God forbid I should open up the book and start actually reading God's word, which now seemingly is going to become more and more difficult. Because coming down the pipeline definitively is censorship. Well, you see it already on social media, right? So all I'm telling you is this. For before I start my message, before we get the service started, I've asked you many times, pray for our country. I'm not asking you to pray for the president. I'm not. So much damage. I don't care if you're red, blue, green. I don't care what you voted for. So much damage has been done here. The debt to this country, the debt of our state. Oh, we just keep spending while people don't even understand the corruption that looms in the state of California alone. It's a big business to keep homelessness going and promote it and keep it going. Why? Because these people who are charitable or whatever they are, they make deals with our administration. So it's a little Ponzi scheme. And it's so good if you were on the other receiving end of that money, you wouldn't want to let it go. So 20 years ago, Gavin Newsom, or 20 years ago, the promise was made to fix homelessness, homelessness in California. Has it been fixed? No, it's gotten worse. And now we're seeing our own citizens who weren't homeless before, who can't afford rent, who cannot afford to stay in the homes they're in, who will become homeless, all by design, because we don't have a government working for the people. They are all out for themselves to enrich them. You tell me how this works. You may hate Donald Trump, but he came into office and left poorer. And he's the only example I can think of while the rest of these come in poor and leave millionaires. You tell me how that works if it's a government for the people. Now, I don't want to use my pulpit for politics, even though I just said a mouthful. I don't want to use my pulpit for anything but the word of God. But as someone who cares deeply about the future, and specifically the future of our country, let alone our state. It's really time for us to really begin thinking, what can we do? Not violence, not 
looting or crime, that's for the people who don't want to solve the problem but make it worse. What can we do, aside from praying, what can we do to turn this ship around? Well, as I said, absolutely vote. That's if the voting is legitimate. What can we do to help ourselves? Just try and spend some time thinking about what you can do. There are people gathering names for petitions, but here's the problem. We all probably, all of us probably sign petitions to recall Newsom and to recall Gascon. That is our, unfortunately, our uh, structured DA, Gascon, and Newsom, who most people know, I would like to refer to him as Beavis. <laughs> or maybe he's the other guy, I don't know. In any case, do you know how many signatures filled those petitions that were legitimately, legitimately verified? There were enough signatures to recall both. And yet somehow, they managed to stay. The corruption is so deep, my friends, that I'm just telling you, if we don't start thinking, planning, and considering what we as average citizens can do, and we stand back and say, I wouldn't sign my name up, I won't put my, I won't do, we're just becoming part of the problem of retreating back. That's what you do in a war. When there's too much in front of you, you retreat. Well, you may retreat for a little while, but unless you're prepared to live in an America that is patterned after China, I suggest we all start thinking, what can we do and how can we make it happen? The movement, unfortunately, as I said, is already tentacled. The Marxist, socialist, communist has infiltrated everywhere. And to make matters worse, with no borders anymore, you tell me what type of a crisis we're going to have when we can't even take care of our own citizens and we can't even repair our own infrastructure. And now we're handing out freebies ad nauseum to people just walking across our border. Now, I said this to you before, but I'm, I say this and I'm done. I came here and went through the process legally. It wasn't easy. It was a very long, in fact, I told you this, I never wanted to become an American citizen. I was just happy to be a permanent resident alien, and I was so for probably 25 years of my life, I think, maybe more, 30, 30 plus years of my life. It was only because of Dr. Scott literally pleading with me on his deathbed, and I won't even tell you, he used some explicatives and said, do it. He had three dying wishes, that was one of them, and I did it. I don't regret doing it, but I look back and I think to myself, there has to be some reason why we are seeing this, and it is, I don't care what you want to say, it is demonic to the core, and everything that we once considered good and beautiful and precious has been infiltrated, has been stained. This country needs a cleansing. This country needs salvation. This country needs Jesus Christ more than ever. And this country needs its citizens to stop dibble-dallying in these ideas. We, we entertain the church, for example. And I'm just going to say this. I've repeated this many times. The church does not need to change its doctrine we never said you can't come in the door because you're gay. We never said you can't come in the door because you're trans. We never said you can't come in the door because you're queer. We never said any of these things. These are people looking for excuses to reject Christ and create a deity of their own because the Jesus I serve and every word uttered by him in this book is inclusive. So why did the church buckle? and decide to change its ways? Why did the government, why did the army, for example, the toughest, we were the best, we were the greatest, why did they buckle, why did they cave? Pressure from a small minority that won't shut up. And it's time, I'm sorry, that the majority in America who are sane, who still love this country, who are God-fearing, it's time for us to put our foot down and say, no more, no more. 
I will not tolerate another thing shoved down my throat because it is the minority driving the bus here, and then people just jump on the bandwagon. When you figure that out, you'll figure out you do, and I do. We all have power, not because I'm in a, on a pulpit where people are watching me. We all have power to make this change. As long as we have courage and faith, God at the forefront, and in our, in our mind's eye, what the founding fathers desired for this country to be, which we have so richly enjoyed, needs to be protected at all costs. When we get to that point where we all feel it's our responsibility, change will happen. Until then, this, this walking backwards and saying, I, I don't have anything to do with it, will just let the minority be heard even louder. Now, I'm done with it. I don't know about you, but I'm done with it. The time to stand up and whatever that means for each person is now, not tomorrow, it's now. I hope you will think carefully about what I've said because everything I'm talking about doesn't just affect Melissa Scott, it affects every single person in the sound of my voice. It affects every single person who calls themselves an American with pride, who's not saying I'm ashamed of my country and I'm ashamed of this and I'm ashamed of that. Shame on you. And maybe, maybe, Oh, I'd love to see this. Maybe the day will come when we start telling these people, I hate the country. Here, instead of spending money and sending it to Ukraine, which is nothing but money laundering, here, we'll give you a one-way ticket to a Sharia country. Knock yourself out. I think I'm done. That's the little portion I could get out, because if I let it all out, and I'd probably be speaking for all of you. It's, it's really that to the point where I do not know how America can remain America if we don't do our part. That doesn't guarantee, by the way, that we won't have more election interference. And Listen, I mean, my dog, you believe that? Well. If you don't believe what happened in the last cycle, all you got to do is look at what's going on now. And, and please, don't play the game of, oh, that's just the media. The media fe spoon feeds you the agenda given to them that they want you to have. We no longer have media here. So if you think about it, no, we are we're actually being tampered with right now. So just please consider everything I've said. It's that serious, all right? And if you're like me, you'll... You'll probably be up to the wee hours thinking about what can I do. Trust me, that's, that's how I spend a lot of my time, asking God, please show me the way. Show me the way, God. I'll go. Whatever it is, I'll go, but show me. And trust me, when, when I get clarity on this, I will do whatever the Lord leads me to do. And I pray the same for you. In Jesus' name. <laughs> house, magnify the Lord, lift up holy hands, our hearts in one accord, worship and bow down before Him, exalt His name today, come into this house.